Welcome to the Flamin Connect podcast, a podcast focused on the individual pieces that make up the larger community of people together doing what's right and making a difference. Today's hosts, we have myself, Trevor Grindy, Regan Kuntz, and Mitch Flamin. What a time to be alive. No doubt. No doubt. Now kids make like thousands and thousands of dollars just YouTubing themselves destroying video yeah. games. You know, one Like of it's the, an occupation. Yeah, like it, the kids ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? YouTuber is a career choice for kids now. Unreal. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And some, well, and then some of the creativity too. Like yeah. Some of the things that kids come up with or like yeah. some of these YouTube channels are... They're crazy. So that's my challenge is I'll let the kids, like, they'll go on their tablets or whatever and they'll watch YouTube videos. And I always kind of monitor what they watch. And it's all it's all kind of fluff. Like, you know, my boy will watch, like, um, oh, what is it, um, where they'll do sports tricks and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what's the name of it? Anyway, I forget it. But it, it's, it's all these different videos that they can access. They can watch for hours and hours and hours all you got to do is just get the youtube premium subscription so they don't have ads and then they can <laughs> just double down on their time spent no. my youngest will watch uh mine he's got two or three different minecraft channels that he watches and he'll watch those for hours and hours and hours yeah yeah when did it become cool crazy. to watch other kids play video games i don't, I don't know. know right no well maybe just yeah. when you were too poor to have your own i don't know <laughs> 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 like Can I could I hardly watch? stand it when it was my brother's turn to play the Nintendo. I could sit there and watch him. Now kids will openly just watch other people play. Uh, Dude Perfect is what I was thinking of before. We'll yes. watch Dude Perfect yeah. videos mm-hmm. over and over and over. Yeah. Okay. Until over it came again. out that a lot of the Dude Perfects weren't really, they were staged. Right? Are you serious? So, oh, a lot of green screen action and uh, no oh, yeah, way. a lot of drop balls here. That is so sad. Yeah. I did not want to hear that today. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ruined Hutch's <laughs> day. I Cut thought these guys out. were spending hours and hours perfecting all a lie. Yeah. It's all a lie. Okay, um, let's do. Let's let's go into coffee. Cause okay. We're morning coffee. Get up for the day. Here's some facts about your favorite coffee bean. Mm-hmm. Ready? So, did you know that coffee beans are not actually a bean? I did know this. Did you know that? Um, I did know that. It is a, it's it's a, a legume. It's a pit actually from the oh, coffee really? cherry. Huh. So yeah, the the beans removed and then they harvest it. They process it and they they. Hmm. So, yeah, it's actually the pit of a coffee cherry. Trevor, on that topic, is a tomato a fruit or a vegetable? Fruit. And do you tell your kids to eat their fruits and vegetables or just eat your vegetables <laughs> and then, like, take the tomato off? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind tomatoes. Oh, they'll kill you. Like those oh. sweet cherry tomatoes? Like, you get them right off the vine? Oh, yeah, those I, are awesome. They're like candy. You, you're not a tomato guy? Oh, sweet cherry tomatoes, not good? Like, I'm a huge wuss when it comes to tomatoes. I don't know why. Really? My kids hammer those little cherry tomatoes which yeah. like warms yeah. my heart explode in your it's, mouth it's a pretty cruel world if you don't eat tomatoes there's it, it's hard yeah yeah you, there was a time where i was in university i had to train myself to drink a caesar i can do them now i enjoy them but i can't do clam huh. but i can do clam i can do a caesar and that all came from on sundays during university mm-hmm. when you don't have a wife or kids to take care of. You got Sundays, like your day with your buddies, yep. whether Caesar it's sports Sundays. or whatever. Caesar Sundays. Yeah. So I drink like a beer and orange juice or something. And people <laughs> like, what? Get a Caesar. I'm like, I can't. I'm a big uh, wuss. How so, do you feel about uh, ketchup or yeah, salsa? Yeah, I can do all of it. Yeah. Really? There's something about that that raw tomato. I just can't. So I remember growing up and grandma would just throw, took a tomato right off the plant and throw a little bit of salt on it. Yeah. And eat it kind of like an apple. Yep. That's my kids do it. Yep. My kids will grab... Exactly. They'll grab tomatoes uh-huh. and eat them just like an apple. Yeah. Okay. Did you know that there exists a coffee made with poop? No. True. Please yeah. explain. It uh, originates in Indonesia. Um, it's called Kopi Luwak, and it's one of the most sought-after coffees in the world. It's uh, produced with the help of a, um, a palm civet, which is basically a cat. They eat the coffee cherries and pass the beans, and then there's a they do a fermentation process, um, and then it's supposed to when it comes out in the final brew, it's supposed to be a very smooth finish. Hard no, <laughs> I just can't get over it. No, no. It goes for over four hundred pounds, so in mm-hmm. British money, four hundred pounds a kilogram. 
Like that's big bucks. What's the equivalent <laughs> in Canadian dollars? People know that's what they're getting though. Uh, so it'd be like, would it be like five, six hundred bucks for a kilogram? That's that's crazy, hey. But people know they're getting poop coffee. Yeah, well, like yeah, they're doing yeah. It on purpose. Is on my... purpose. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Did you know that coffee helps you live longer? Please explain. Yeah, I know. It's it's jam packed full of antioxidants. It's actually one of the healthiest drinks in the world. Really? Yeah. Tricky Trevor. That's <laughs> that's to tell you add all the cream and <laughs> yeah, the sugar yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, syrup the and the whatever else. So drinking yeah. black coffee is <laughs> actually good for me. It's yeah, it's not good for my guts. It just rots my guts. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, other than that, I'm a, I'm a two, maybe a three cupper just in the morning. And that's it. I can't have coffee after lunch because I feel the effects of it at night, both really? in my guts and actually I can't sleep. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I stay away from the Javas after lunch, which is tough when you're on the road and you sit down with a customer and, and hey, nice. you drink a ton yeah. of coffee, you yeah. know, sitting at the kitchen table. So try and restrain myself a little bit. But yeah, what do you put in your coffee, Reggie? Uh, it's, I've been black for. Five years now, four yeah. years, yeah. Same, Trevor. I used to drink it black, but I have to put cream in it now. Do you? What Otherwise, uh, it bothers my stomach. If I don't put oh, cream really? in it, it bothers my stomach <clears throat> like crazy. Like it just. See, I have to make sure. I mean, this is, you know, I'll call it five years ago or maybe even less time. Um, I would just wake up in the morning and I'd pound two or three coffees and then I'd have something to eat for breakfast. I do purposely have to eat something before I have my coffee in the morning. It's time for Now You Know. It's the part of the program where we talk to people, experts in their field, various varieties and various areas of farming. And today we're talking with Sean Geddes, the Vice President of Sales from Flamin. Thanks, Trevor. I would like to talk about the difference between gas and diesel and electric-powered grain handling equipment. So specifically augers, but... What's your opinion? Is there pros and cons to either of the three? Is there a preference? Is there what? What are you seeing? Absolutely, another great uh, setup question with a whole bunch of answers to it versus <laughs> yes or no. Uh, there is. Um, so I'm just going to start on diesel. Um, many people feel that a diesel will not start as well in the winter as a, as a gas, per se. Mm-hmm. The electric will always go. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of those stories come from the old 4020 uh, tractor. You walk by it with an ice cream cone and it won't start. <laughs> or the 84 uh, Oldsmobile car with the old 57 diesel in it that had the crank, 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 and it was kind of a smelly pain in the butt. Yeah. But diesels today have changed, and they do start better often in the winter than a gas. They're less, they're just, they just go better. Mm-hmm. They also have the ability to, like with block heaters, preheaters, glow plugs, and all that stuff, to really be a reliable source of power. And they're also a little bit more efficient, but we're usually not too concerned about the efficiency there. We're more concerned about, is it going to work? Right. Am I not going to have to fight with it? And will it have enough power? Yeah, and power versus efficiency versus cost. Right. And well, a diesel will always have the power as the torque to bear down. And uh, uh, But what, what comes with diesel is a higher cost. So some of the problems... And are you talking initial cost or operating cost or both? Just up front. Like yeah. on, on an auger, um, our experience is that diesel is going to outlast the rest of the iron all the way around it. Right. So what we're finding today is uh, farmers are looking for something that's more reliable and that's going to last longer. And that's what a diesel engine will provide you as a power source. Um, but, but there's also concerns around the reliability of the emissions component. So mm-hmm. on, a, on the augers or the, like the smaller under 60 horsepower uh, engine, diesel engines, they don't use DEF. They have a just a, a a burner on the exhaust, and they're way easier to maintain than a 2011 uh, diesel half ton that would leave you on the side of the road. Right. Yeah. Uh, although emissions technology has come a long ways, uh, it tends to be less of a problem. But I do understand where guys are concerned about it. 
But on these small diesel engines, it's not as sophisticated and it's not as complex and troublesome as high horsepower diesel engines. Right. Gas is economical. And when you get into gas, there's the old age old question, carbureted versus EFI. Yeah. Yeah. The old carburetor, we can all use our screwdrivers and, um, and uh, adjust those and play with them, clean the carbs and all that. Uh, we know that uh, gas is a, not the same fuel as it used to be, which can be troublesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, gas engines don't like moisture in the, in the fuel. I guess diesels don't, but they have ways to deal with that. Um, and they're more susceptible and they're a little bit more ignorant in uh, cold weather. Mm-hmm. And they can have the and they can be in uh, in hot weather too. Um, so we're find, seeing a trend though, where m- as technology evolves, where more people are, are if they choose a gas route, are, are going towards EFI engines mm-hmm. to manage the temperature changes and whatnot. They start better. They still on a cold day, they can kind of mess around a little bit. Um, one thing we try to tell our our customers or to encourage them are on if you are using an EFI, make sure you turn the key on for five seconds before you crank it. The system needs to boot up, it needs to pressure up, and then it'll go. Uh, We find that people that have problems with uh, the EFIs are just hitting the key like a carb. Mm -hmm. Um, There's other ways to help uh, with the engine in the cold weather too. There's uh, uh, a tube that will go from the muffler to the intakes, you're drawing warmer air. Um, of course, you'd want to do that in the summertime, but that definitely helps with uh, freeze ups um, for wintertime operation. Electric is a good old standby reliable uh, solution, but with electric, you lose all your portability mm-hmm. uh, unless you have a pup engine running the hydraulics from mover and the lift mechanisms and and all that but if you're just uh loading out uh a dry bin let's say and that auger never moves an electric's great choice mm-hmm. but uh not too many of us are interested in grabbing a 1239 auger uh by the intake and drawing it around the yard anymore mm-hmm. um whether it's not like the old uh 839 so uh, let's let's talk about an electric auger for a minute here i feel like in recent times, within the last, I bet it, I think it's been less than a year actually that Conveil came out with a electric auger, and I believe is it accurate to say they're the first ones to do so? Yeah, they came out with uh, Conveil came out with a sixteen fifty TL, which is their uh, loadout config, uh, conveyor configuration, but they they Tesla it. They yeah. added a battery pack. Uh, in in exchange, it. like the uh, the conveyor itself is the same, but the drive on it is, like you say, it's a Tesla, right? So the uh, the conveyor drive system is is somewhat simple enough. You just remove your either your diesel or gas source of, of power and replace it with an electric motor, mm-hmm. and the battery pack essentially would provide you with portability it w- it's not like uh, an electric lawnmower uh with a elect- uh, electrical cord tied right. to it yeah, it's more yeah. like a battery powered lawnmower and that's yeah. exactly the way that uh conveil will operate and they are getting really great performance out of it um it sounds a little bit it's a, it's a little bit more money um and uh, i just haven't seen what their tests are in real cold weather um, and how that uh, battery will stand up to that. Mm-hmm. What's the application? Why would um, why would someone be interested in moving to an electric powered conveyor? Well, your fuel is basically a plug-in charger. Yeah, which means it should always go. Yeah. Um, but I really see as they're entering the market into probably some industrial sites. Mm-hmm. Um, California, mm-hmm. Um, where there is much more emissions regulations, uh, noise regulations. And then I think once that's proven, I could see the market potentially having a look at it. 
So I sure appreciate when uh, manufacturers have the courage to try something else. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> I also know we all have our stories. I know that if I'm working outside with my Milwaukee Impact and it's cold out, that that battery tends to fall on its face a little quick. Yeah. And then you're a little disappointed. Yeah. But then there's other things like uh, the F1 racing. F1E is an electric circuit now. Mm-hmm. And they're wild, those cars. Wow. And the, the power is incredible. Yeah. So there, there's lots of different industries that are working to find new uh, solutions. Mm-hmm. But I'm just not exactly sure how our power grid and our infrastructure is going to handle all that in the future. And there you have it. Thanks, Sean. We're going to move on to the last segment of our show today, and that's an interview with our special guest. Guest today is Lori Nelson, Procurement and Logistics Coordinator for Top Crop in Saskatoon. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. That's a big title, Procurement and Logistics Coordinator. Well, I understand proc- well, I'm sorry, I understand <laughs> logistics. I don't quite understand procurement. Can you get into that a little bit? Uh, that's the purchasing of the product that we ship out to our farmers and our locations. So you're going to mines and all sorts of different places to find the product? Well, we've already found it. It's just a matter of organizing the, the trucking to move it from place to place. Tell us what is Top Crop? Uh, it's the new fertilizer company that Flamin has on staff now. Uh, I think it was 18 or 19. That would be yeah. a question for you, Mitch. Yeah, no, it would be about five-ish years ago, I think, around there, and we, we partnered up there. So, yeah. Because I came on board just in 21, just as it was starting to grow quite rapidly within Flamin. So, it is, I guess, foliar, regenerative, starters. We've got a mixture of a whole bunch of things, uh, including organic and... I guess the synthetic as well. So we've got a wide range of things that can help each and every one of the farmers that are out there. Uh, we, we like to dig into the past a little bit um, because I, I find it interesting to understand how the person has developed to bring the to the culture that we have right here. Where did you grow up? Uh, what was it like for you as a kid? I grew up in Saskatoon, born and raised. My parents are from Humboldt. They were, I wouldn't say high school sweethearts, but... Yeah, they've been together a long time. Mm-hmm. So, so, siblings? I have a sister. She lives in PA. Oh, yeah. She works for the city of PA at their soccer center. I don't know what it's called up in by the hospital. She's been there since right after she had Brianna, her daughter. So that would have been in two thousand and one. Who's older? Sorry, I'll no. You're not. You're not allowed to say it like that. Who's younger? <laughs> <laughs> I am the youngest oh, okay, of the, the two of us. Yeah, There's only it. two of us in our family. So yeah. elementary school, high school, all was here. I moved out to Ask with first stretch, but then we came to the city because there was no sports for kids or girls out there. So, mm-hmm. and I'm very big sports person. Mm-hmm. Played softball since I was seven. Went to nationals a few times mm. in the Regina. Softball Hall of Fame. Oh, really? Yeah. Decorated. Tell <laughs> yeah. us about that. How'd you get there? Um, it was midget. Yeah, it was the year I was a midget. We lost provincials, got at, but I got picked up by Regina Panthers as a shortstop and ended up, we went, we had a really slow start, but then we ended up coming back and winning. Um, where did you go to high school in Saskatoon? Edie Fian. Edie Fian. Yeah. Did you play high school sports there as well? Yeah. yeah. I played basketball my in my, I guess, my fresh year. Yeah. Not a big fan of basketball, but I played volleyball. I also played ringette, broom ball, ball hockey, a kickbox. There's several things in my wheelhouse. Do you still play any sports? I haven't, no. no. I played when I, the year I had Abby in 2001, I had her in May and I played in nationals in August. Oh, really? Yeah. And then I played for a little bit after that. But once I had Kirsten, it just, it, there was too much happening. So tell us about nationals. Where was it? How'd you guys do? Uh, it was Edmonton for that, for my softball. Yeah. Uh, that was in Edmonton. I don't even, I think I was 16, 17, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. And did you win? Yeah, we won the wow. whole shot and MVP. You were the MVP? And top batter. 
What oh, yeah. a time to it's, be alive. Wow. No doubt. It, it was That's a amazing. good yeah, it was a good year. <laughs> and then I then from there after I was done, I had a a boyfriend pass away when I was 21 and after that I went off that map and went for more the competitive slow pitch. Yeah. And found a group, a good group of people. We went to nationals several times and won nationals at that level as well. Hmm. Is there anything you like didn't win? Anything that sticks out <laughs> that like was this somewhat of a failure? Uh, one marriage. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, Fair enough. So yeah, no, sports have been really huge in my life, but then kids came along and they were yeah. more important than I was. Was that something that was um promoted by your parents like they were very in favor oh, of you yeah. playing sports and yeah like my mom, mom actually co- coached my sister which then i had to tag along because she was yeah. older so then just got playing so yeah no it was never something that they shied away from obviously back in those days the money wasn't uh it was very hard to come by so yeah There was years, uh, my father has Crohn's disease and he was really sick, so I couldn't play the high end. I just played area ball, but Mm -hmm. it was for the best of my family. Yep. I love my parents, so Mm -hmm. they've done lots for me, so. Um, Who would you say was the most influential uh, to you as a, as a, a teenager? Would it be a coach? Would it be a teacher? Would it be your parents? Um, it was probably, hmm. In certain aspects of my life, there was uh, a neighbor, which he was a coach of mine, which really came to bat for me through some hard times, through politics and ball and sports Mm -hmm. and stuff, and then with my family. So Wayne Bartley, yeah, and my mom and dad, they've always been there for me. So Mm -hmm. always traveled Mm -hmm. (laughs) lots of places with ringette and softball. If you could go back in time and give your 18-year-old self Mm -hmm. a piece of advice, what would you tell her? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would probably tell her to look outside the box Yeah. more than I think I did at that time. What would you have told yourself, Reg? I'm trying to answer that question myself. I'm like, <laughs> my 18-year-old hey, self. Yeah. I'm asking the questions here, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's a... That's a novel. That's like, hey, man, we need to sit down. We need I, to chat. I think the kids nowadays have more of an opportunity to look outside of that box. Because when I look at what my cat, my kids have in front of them versus what I had in front of me, like the world is an open book for them where I, it didn't... For me at 18, thinking back, it didn't feel that way. It was like you had the stepping stones. You went to high school, then you had to go to college, and then you had to get a job, and then you got married. Like it just seems so stepping stone back then for me. I don't know. I'm I'm a lot older than all of you, so. What I would have told myself, Mitchell? Yeah, buy land and real estate. That's what I (laughs) would have told my 18 year old self. Yeah, mortgage whatever you can to acquire property. Yeah, Yeah. invest in gold. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. And then about uh, 10 years ago, uh, buy a little bit of Bitcoin. Yeah, and then sell it like eight years later. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So Laura, you'd mentioned uh, a couple girls in your life. So you have a couple daughters. Yeah. Are they? And then so you'd also mentioned how. Uh, the world's a bit of an open book for them. Like they're able to do lots of stuff. Tell us a little about your daughters. I know some, I yeah. know a little bit about one of them and I know she's traveled a bit, but what are they into? Are they into sports like you were or did you just try and provide to them? How does, how does that work? Uh, my oldest, uh, well, when they were little, they were both in Taekwondo and they ended up, wasn't really their cup of tea. They were in it for a couple of years, but just wasn't their cup of tea. So then they did start um, soccer and they did try softball. Um, I never pushed them to do it. They tried it. They didn't like it. And they do ask me the question, were you mad that we didn't keep going? I said, no, uh, you, it's your life. It's not my life. Yeah. I had my life in softball. Yeah. If that's not you, that's not you. So they both played soccer. Uh, Abby, my oldest, is actually playing soccer with Kala on oh, a cool. team. Yeah, so she's back at it, but she's still in university taking Edwards School of Business for Accounting. So mm-hmm. she's going to graduate at the end of 24 yes end of 24 school year 
So then she'll be going on to her master's in accounting. Cool. So very cool. Yeah. So she's still playing soccer and still working and has a she has a placement through Edwards at WBM, which is Western Business Machine. Mm -hmm. So she likes it there. So they're supporting her and doing her master's program as well. So that's awesome. good for her. My youngest, she play like I said, she's played soccer as well. Um, then there was a turning point where she had to decide between soccer and gymnastics because she was getting fairly high in the gymnastics world, ended up being a national gymnast for a stretch. Oh, wow. So mm. that was a lot of traveling with her as well. <laughs> so, And she went to school in Kelowna, so she was there for 15 months. It was a speedy diploma. It was through the summer through, it mm -hmm. was 11 weeks in, two weeks out, 11 weeks in kind of deal. So she had five quads. She's done now back at home looking for a job, but. And that was in the field of marketing, right? Uh, I think design. it's, yeah, it's graphic and web design is yeah. what it was the diploma cool. in. Yeah. So she's still feeling a little tough on trying to find a job. No, no one wants to, you know, dig their heels in with someone that's mm -hmm. new. Everybody wants experience. So. Maybe that's the problem with the book being too open nowadays. Back then, you didn't <laughs> you didn't have a chance. You just had to go to work, and this is the job you're going to have, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So then they're both living at home. So <laughs> still, but oh well. <laughs> what's a what's a funny story your family or your kids would tell about you? Well, if you had my youngest camera, she has a lot of. We're ra rather. I'm really goofy with my kids at home, mm -hmm. and my my youngest always says. Oh, my friends just love they, you. They just love you. Like, I love your mom. I love your mom. And I'm like, well, why? Because you're different than the other moms. You're not so, you know, uptight or what have you. So I don't know. So I don't know. That's a that's good, good. that's a good question because um, there's always those moments. I don't know if there's any one specific. I'd, I'll have to ask them though. That's a good question. I don't know what they would say. Obviously yeah, they both have, they would have different stories to relay, right? Um, Cause I spent a lot of time on the road with Kirsten with gymnastics. So there's probably a lot of stories there. <laughs> are, are you one of those fiery moms that, yeah. you know, can't be quiet in a sporting event their child plays? Are you, you know? What do you think, Regan? <laughs> You see, <laughs> tell us a story about that. <laughs> and maybe when your daughter said, mom, just. Oh, there's been, um, things that have happened, you know, with politics in sports. And they're like, Kirsten has said to me, don't yell at the mom. Cause she knows, cause I'm a fiery redhead. <laughs> if something I know is incorrect, I will speak out and they don't like that sometimes, mm -hmm. but I've had to step my foot forward and I'm not scared to. So <laughs> what, what is the wildest thing in uh, procurement and logistics that's come out of your mouth on the other side of the phone? Oh, I don't think I'm able to say that on here. <laughs> well, I've talked to you about that this morning, who I have to deal with. So yeah, there's been some, I, some things that have come out of my mouth. I'm a bit of a trucker mouth. I would say uh, just given that her desk is just down the hallway from mine. It's probably an earshot half the time I can hear. <laughs> yeah, that's maybe not a good thing, Munchie. <laughs> what does your morning routine look like? Uh, up, shower, breakfast, out the door. Same time, every day. Yep. Yeah. Even on the weekends, I'm not a sleeper in her. Yeah. No. So, yeah, it's pretty... Sucks, eh? <laughs> um, I've always been that way, even when I was younger, even it was even worse. I would get up earlier, even after a night out. <laughs> so, yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah. It's so, kind of weird. So yeah, no, I've never been one to sleep in too much. What's the favorite trip you've ever taken? Jamaica. Recently? Uh, we went to Antigua, Antigua, I think is what it's called just this past December, but Jamaica, I've been there 11 times. I think. Why? Why I, Jamaica? Uh, it's. We go to a place that's couples only where you don't have to hear screaming kids. Mm -hmm. Not that I have screaming kids at home, but it's just nice to have that I get it. downtime. Yeah. Uh, I love the beach. I love the people. I love the food. It's just my place, my happy place. If you won the 649 tomorrow mm -hmm. and had an instant influx of $20 million into your bank account, mm -hmm. what's the first thing you buy? A cabin. Where would you go? Jamaica, weren't you listening? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd have to shop around, but um, Dean and I, my husband, we spend a lot of time up at Candle Golfing. 
we do like the golf getaways and stuff it'd be nice to have just a place to go but I don't know it'd be half we'd have to do some investigating on that but it'd be definitely north north is the way to go for sure I've asked um I've asked a couple of uh male guests that we've had on this question so I think you're gonna have an easier time with it what is your favorite Disney princess oh god (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have no idea oh that's good it's been a long stretch since I've had to sit down and watch Disney, so <laughs> my kids are fairly, they're way past that. But having said that, Kirsten still sometimes watches Disney movies. Have you guys seen the Disney movie Wreck-It Ralph? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay, so I'm in this beauty age right now where my kids just crush Disney movies. And, like, they're getting better. Like, like they're so good. And in Wreck-It Ralph... Um, I don't know what the little girl's name is, Pen- Penelope maybe or something, or Pen- Pen- I don't know, Penelope. Penelope. Penelope, there you go. And uh, she ends Penelope. up, well, I don't know, <laughs> same, whatever. So she ends up in this, uh, in this room with all these Disney princesses. And when you look at them, so like that shouldn't be a hard question to ask when you see this room. There's like 15 of them in there. But it's hilarious because they all are playing in character of their story and there's they're the victim of something. And yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, Disney princesses have been around since like the 60s. There's so many of them. Yeah. There's so many of them. There's lots to choose from. But what, what, what would you say if I said peach? <laughs> Su- a- Super Mario? <laughs> yeah. I would have got it. I would, I would have, I'd say that counts. That works. Yeah, sure. that counts. Disney will own Nintendo sooner enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? I would say probably pierogies and cabbage rolls. What a good answer. Nice. Mm-hmm. What a good answer. <laughs> Sausage in there too? Or? No, you can leave that out. You can really? get that because I like ground beef in my uh, cabbage rolls. So mm-hmm. I've, yeah. Yeah. That's a standard at our house during uh, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas. So, if your parents are from Humboldt, I'm assuming you are of German roots, yes, not I Ukrainian. Am. Yep. All right. But it has to be cottage cheese pierogies. Yeah. I not. I'm not. I I'll eat the potato, but my mom's are the best. I had a guy I worked with, and I brought him some that my mom made, and he's like, "Don't tell my grandma, but they're better than hers." <laughs> <laughs> do you make pierogies, cabbage rolls, that sort of stuff? I do. Yeah. I'm not very good at it yet. Practice but, makes perfect. Bring mm-hmm. some in. <laughs> but I haven't had, really had to do that because my mom still really enjoys that stuff. So it's like. You should bring some of hers too. Mm-hmm. And then we can judge them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Do you or have you made sauerkraut? No. Why? I'm not Why? a fan of that. Boo. No, I'm with her. It's not good for you. <laughs> uh, no. <Nope>. My mom <laughs> and dad covered. love it, but I'm not a fan of it. No. Same as the pickle beets can, yeah. Oh, no I thanks. Pickle beets. I can handle pickle oh, beets. Boy. But Reggie, what cabbage. descent are you? Oh, you think? <laughs> 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 There's a schnitzel or two. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most important lesson you've learned over your career? My career? Um, I'd have to say don't take things for granted that right, are right in front of you. You got an example? Um, I've had opportunities in the past to move here and there. And when I look back at what I've done in my decision making over the years, there, when I look back, there's decisions that I probably shouldn't have made, just stayed put. Mm-hmm. But it, it has made me who I am yep. and got me to where I am right now. So how can you complain? Yeah, you can, um, you can have lessons without regrets. Yeah, there's always the what if, what if, what yeah. if. But if you live on the what if, then you're you're screwing yourself. Yeah. Three favorite movies. Gladiator. Oh. Uh, I like the Back to the Futures. If you had to choose, if you had to choose between one, two, or three, which one would you choose? Oh, I always watch Gladiator or the other Bowling Girl. I'm gonna say on the, on the oh the other Bowling Girl really. Have you seen that? I have. Um. Back to the Future, one, two, or three. Choose one, 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 always, yeah. always, always. Kind of like three. Three's really? Good. Three's good. Yeah, no. One. Two is just interesting. I, I love when they have uh, futuristic movies, and I, th- I'm, I'm gonna say it was like 2012 or something like oh, that. Oh, is it that far? Yeah, it's like 2023. 
It was like was this, that what it was? It was this year. I just got it sent to me. That's I just right too. I just got it sent to me, and it said, and if if Doc and Marty or whatever were alive, they'd be showing up like this year. I want my flying skateboard. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to happen now. <laughs> yeah, I just had that sent to me like in the last month or two. Really? Mm-hmm. Do you read? I do usually only on vacation because I usually don't have time. It's the last book you've read. It was called. Um, I just looked at it. It was on my nightstand. Um, one step behind. It was about a stalker. And you're reading that before bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> or on the on the beach in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. If you could have coffee with anyone, present or past, somebody that you've never met before, who would it be? Oh, that I've never. I would love to either sit down with Jason Bateman or Ryan Reynolds. Cause they look Good like they'd be, answer. they'd be a blast. <laughs> Cause I, he was on the pro-am just on the weekend and we were watching. He just looks like the most genuine person. And that's what I get from what you hear about Ryan Reynolds. But when you see Jason Bateman on the golf course, he was just shooting the shit with the guys in the crowd and just like, so laid back, like either one of them, that would be a bonus. Probably more a beer than a coffee though. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we used to always ask the question, you'd be in like Craven and it'd be like Tim McGraw and Kenny Chesney. But I think Tim McGraw, and he's probably still as bigger than Kenny Chesney, maybe, I don't know. But it was like, who would you rather drink a case of beer with, Tim McGraw or Kenny Chesney? And like the amount of people are like, Tim McGraw, Tim McGraw. No, like, Kenny Chesney like, for sure. No. Doesn't Kenny have his own island? Yeah, and he has his own rum. That's what I mean. Like Blue Chair, Blue Chair guy, Bay rum. That guy. That's yeah. the guy I want to go drink a case of beer I don't with. think people want to drink with him because you wouldn't get any beer. No. Well, I, drink, I would drink the rum. <laughs> no, we would get an unlimited amount oh, yeah. on his island. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in like St. John's in the Virgin Islands, I think. Yeah, I think. that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. That, would be, that would be my go-to between those two because... Yeah. I was at a Tim McGraw and Faith Hill concert, and he was boring as shit on stage. Yeah, I've also been watching a movie, not a movie, a show, 1883. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in there. Got a little more respect for him now, like a little bit more. Is, he that, also, good? Is that good, that show? Uh, yeah, I like yeah. it. He, he eats meat in it, which in real life apparently doesn't eat meat, which I'm fine with that. I don't care. But then I'm watching him eat like raw meat in this show. I'm like, huh. You really think that's real meat? A hard sand, because like, I'm just saying he's pretty much the main character in this thing. Yeah. They're, Probably paint him. So did you watch 1883 and then 1923 and then, uh, what is it, Yellowstone? Uh, Well, not in that order, but yeah. So caught up on Yellowstone, did 1883, and then now just waiting on... we, we usually watch it with the neighbors, actually. It's the one thing we, we do as an excuse to get together. So after the kids will get to bed, then you'll get together and walk across the street and watch one episode before it's like late, late. So... 19 oh or what is it 19 1823 yeah that one's done that was yeah. tim mcgraw 1883 no next one's 19 something i think anyway yeah. i think i haven't even looked at it i think no tim mcgraw's not in that one i don't know, maybe i, I think know. he's in the very first one 1883 that's the one he's in yeah. for sure and faith is in there too yeah yeah she looks rough uh yeah i <laughs> yeah there's something about and they probably did a whole bunch of makeup to make her look more yeah, that so, way. Because yeah. when you look at her on photos and stuff, she's pristine. Well, so, but I wonder, because then when you're trying, so I don't think they had face surgery back in the early 1900s no. like they do now. Yeah. So then when you get <laughs> face surgery post that, and then you have to go back and play a character from the 1900s, it's just like, yeah, that don't work. But Tim McGraw looks like it could have worked. So I don't know. <laughs> what show are you watching right now? You, it's called. Oh. It's about a stalker, actually. <laughs> Are you training or what's yeah. going on here? Um, yeah, I'm into that one, uh, The Handmaid's Tale. I've watched that. I love that show. Um, what other ones? Oh, The Sex Lives of the College Girls or something it's called. That's hilarious. <laughs> My kid, kids got me on that one. It's hilarious. That Hands Made Tale one came up at our house, and I was like, I don't, uh, I don't agree with this, Caitlin. I think. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? It's so scary, on what you see happening in the states, yeah. Versus what happens on the show, it's. I just deferred it. I just said that's a that's one you watch on your own. I don't want to get up to speed on this. <laughs> yeah. And Ozark, I watched. That was a good one. Yeah. So. Have you watched The White Lotus? 
Yeah. That's a good show. I like the first episode or the first season. The first season yeah. Second season, yeah. it, I struggled with it. But like, I love her. Uh, what's the Coolidge? Yeah. But the, all the subtitles in that one, it, it lost its flow for me. I get it. Yeah. But it was okay still. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I watched those. Favorite sport to watch on TV? On TV? And then live. I like to watch any sport live versus TV. Yeah. Um, we watch hockey and baseball, but I'd rather be in person. Yeah. So we've been hitting lots of blades games these, this year, which is different than other years. Just need more things to do outside of the house. So that's good. Yeah. You went to much lacrosse games, the rush games. I've been to a couple this year. Yeah. So yeah. How do you like watching those live? They're good. Yeah. Um, one of Kirsten's ex-boyfriends played lacrosse. So I learned the rules. Yeah. And we go to even their games are exciting as well. But yeah, yeah that the rush is, yeah, it's pumping for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's a good time. And even the basketball when it comes to town is actually, they don't get many fans, but um, it's it's very entertaining. Is it? Yeah. yeah, I'm not, I've never been a huge basketball fan, but mm -hmm. maybe in person it might be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've always found the sounds of live sports is so much different than like even... Like watching basketball or whatever, it was. I don't. I don't mind watching basketball on TV, but when you go watch a basketball game live, it just sounds different. Like it's. I would have actually assumed it to be boring. It wasn't, and same with watching like professional baseball. Watching it on TV, it's. It is like whatever. I don't love it, but when we went and watched it live, the the way things sound, like the way the ball comes off the bat, just. I yeah. thought that that added such a different dynamic to watching any sport live and like that was when i decided it doesn't matter if i like a sport or not i will watch any sport live if i get the opportunity to go do it yep yeah like what about like cricket i've never seen like cricket live but it, I've, I've been to cricket matches live sure. yep yeah. but yeah. it takes How is forever that? uh oh yeah they have five day uh, matches in new zealand when i was there you didn't go for the full five days but people literally go there first thing in the morning with a case of beer and they sit and watch it all day and they come back the next day and watch it again yeah like i feel like i'd enjoy that but, yeah. <laughs> but would you enjoy it if you didn't understand the rules? Like, I don't even wow. know how they keep score. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Don't, we can't, like, can't act like I knew how lacrosse works. But it's, like, it's kind of like hockey, but it's kind of like baseball. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I know yeah. that as long as that ball goes in that net, that guy's winning more than the other guy. <laughs> so, but most, but like most other large public gatherings, you're there to people watch more than I, you are yeah. to watch the sport. I mean, yeah. that, you talked about that baseball example. Absolutely. Baseball is a fantastic sport to go watch live because you're watching the people in the stands. You're eating, drinking beer. You're eating popcorn. You're seeing. Yeah. The, I mean, There's an atmosphere. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. And that's something that you don't get on TV is the live nope. people stuff no. in the background. Like they're not no. mic'd or anything like that. So you don't hear the guy selling popcorn in the stands or whatever. So some some sports do a decent job of getting the live atmosphere into the production of the show. And it's usually like the sports with a ton of money. Like football. Football does, a great, does a great job. Wow. How many cameras? How many cameras? cameras? It's all it's all the sound booms. What? They've got sound booms to ride surrounding oh, the yeah. whole field, so they can pick up like when the quarterback is is you know yelling to the offensive line or the receivers yeah. what's going on. It's like the there. booms picking that up, but that's fifty yards away. Yeah, it's great. So outside of this place, Lori, mm -hmm. if you're not watching live sports or golf in a candle, what are you doing? Oh, I'd still go watch Abby play soccer. Um, thinking about renovating my kitchen on my own. Mm. Really? Yeah. There's that Lotto 649 question I asked yeah. you a little bit before. Well, if that would be the case, it would yeah. be a cabin and a house. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, outside of that, I spend a lot of time with my parents. Because, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's health issues within my family. So never. Where are they living now? I don't assume they're They're like boat. two blocks away from me. Oh, beauty. So, yeah. So it's that's a good spot. So we can always spend time and always help with them with electronics. <laughs> you know how that goes. <laughs> Who's the cook in your family? You or Dean? I am. Yeah? Yeah. Does Dean cook at all? Barbecue. Mm, nothing wrong with that. No. <laughs> so I know that uh, progies and cabbage rolls would be like if you had to, but what's some of your favorite things to cook? Um, I like, well, I cook with my kids lots. Um, they like to, they love pasta. I'm mm -hmm. not a huge fan of pasta, but they like to cook and it's time spent in the kitchen with yeah. them. Like, was it 
no, it wasn't last night. It was the night before. No, it was last night. Alfredo. Mm-hmm. And then they do a lot of baking on their own. Abby loves to bake. Um, I've had uh, this past Christmas. It was my turn. I cooked for everyone. Turkey, the whole shitteroo. So, mm-hmm. so I don't really have anything specific that I like to cook. Um, if I know we're having a gathering, then you just mindset full forward, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, it's a little bit of everything. I don't, I would rather cook outside on the barbecue, not cause I don't have to do it, but I've, I do it as well, <laughs> but, um, this it's better for me. I like it, but I don't know what my favorite would be at home cooking. It's spending time with my kids because yeah. sooner than later, they're going to be out of the house yep. and they're not going to be there. So yep. if they still want to hang out with me, have at her. <laughs> <laughs> does, does that provide you uh, a little bit of anxiety or like, are you, are you craving to be an empty nester or? Uh, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no, obviously they're becoming of that age where they're their own people and don't necessarily um, have the same thought processes of Dean and I, cause we're older <laughs> mm-hmm. you know we have to get up at six in the morning so it's it's time to go to bed and they there's still those night owls that like to be up and doing yep. stuff and it's like you got to be quiet because it's bedtime but yep. up till three sleep till noon well <laughs> they can't really do that because well abby's in school so she's up and out the door before 9 30 i did it when i was in school <laughs> oh so did i don't get me wrong <laughs> there's, yeah. there's two teenagers in our house that do the exact same yeah. thing yeah so yeah in some ways yes some ways no the the comfort of having them there and knowing where they are like i've always told them that they can phone me anytime if they need a ride if if they're drinking or if the person that they came with is drinking whatever that looks like and that when they come through the door you make sure you let me know that you're home like even wake me up just so that i know if i wake up at four in the morning Mm -hmm. and i haven't heard from you like is there a problem so they they do that for me just come and yep. knock on the door. I'm home, mom. That's all I ask of them. And they're re- yeah, they're respectful cool. of that. That's so, cool. yeah. And I've had to go to the bar a few times to pick, pick them up. So, <laughs> so my rule as a kid was I had to be at church in the morning. And, uh, so I was the youngest. So I was back way up. Like Ryan and April had curfews. And by the time I went out, my parents didn't really care. They're just like, you just got to be at church in the morning. But the amount of times that I would have to get, like, I'd just stay the night and then I'd have to get my, friend's parents to drive me to church and then it, you roll in like not in good form for church <laughs> and I always wondered like what my parents were thinking like if I was them like now or if my kids are become no do not come to church looking like like stay <laughs> home but that was always our rule my parents by the end they didn't really well they knew we was I don't know we didn't drink and drive and we didn't really take rides people that would so we yeah. stayed at night, but that was our way of not getting in trouble from a curfew. It was just, if you're at church tomorrow, you're good. So. Yeah. Dad would just say, you're working tomorrow, so just make good choices. Yeah. And there, <laughs> there were a few times where I rolled into the driveway, and Dad said, go grab your lunch, and there's your tractor, and I'll see you at supper time. Yeah. Or the later that you rolled in, the earlier you had to get <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those some long days listening to the uh, three or four radio stations that I had in that tractor at the time. <laughs> <laughs> On AM. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got woken up with firecrackers once. We came, um, Buddy and I were dating these two girls. They were they were each a year older than us. And so they were, they were lifeguards at the lake or something. And so that was like a half hour from his farm. And so we went there. We stayed the night. But we had to come back like first thing in the morning. Because so like we had to be in the field by... I don't know, six or seven. So on minimal sleep, we headed back there and we laid in the, this bed for like, it would have had to be 10 minutes and we were both out cold. Well, his dad took a pot and filled it up with firecrackers and put it right, and it was bunk bed too. We were both in the bottom bunk. I don't know if that's weird, but um, <laughs> anyway, these firecrackers went off and you jumped and smashed your head on the bottom of the top bunk and he's like, get outside. We're like, oh my God. So we took turns. I don't know how we orchestrated this, but one person drove the tractor and one person slept on the floor and we would just rotate <laughs> like an hour at a time. <laughs> it was brutal. Days before auto steer even too. Right? No, there was no auto steer. There was no AC. There was no nothing. Yeah. Then, oh. No, we were probably picking stones or something. Like it was probably something that didn't need to get done that day. 
It's more out of principle but that we had to. needed to get done that day. Yeah. <laughs> this one time, dad said, yep, there's the tractor. You're out heroin. There's where you're going. It was a 4490, so one of those crap steer tractors. And I turned a little bit sharp um, with the harrow. And the you know those old harrows that they had the big cable right from the hitch all oh, the yeah. way to the end of here? So yeah. I wrapped that completely around the tire and squeezed all the cylinders on that tractor tight. Yeah, she was a uh, a very hefty repair. That, that was that your dad's I, fault. He should have known huh, better than a yeah. picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, he didn't see it that way, Mitchell. Yeah, um, probably not. No. Honest mistake. Uh, yeah, honest mistake. <laughs> and then we had to get the dealership to come out and uh, winch the thing onto the truck and take it into Humboldt. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is my favorite question to ask anyone is if you had a billboard downtown, what would it say on it? Donate here. <laughs> <laughs> like a GoFundMe donate yeah, yeah. or like right above a good charity that needs it. <laughs> um, I don't know because um, I that, you guys ask hard questions. That's like, where do you see yourself in five years? Just wait till you get them wrong. <laughs> wrong. I thought there wasn't wrong answers. <laughs> we lied. Yeah. Um, wanted, I guess. <laughs> that might be the thing. Uh, I don't know. That's, I don't know. These are hard questions. It's okay. I'm, I'm not one to boast very much about myself. So mm-hmm. saying those types of things is hard for me to get that out or even know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. So... There's certain aspects that I'm willing to be boastful about, like my, my, I guess my sports career, Mm -hmm. because that's something I'm very, very proud of. But outside of my personality and stuff, that's a very hard one for me to step outside and examine myself. Mm -hmm. That's a hard one for me. It's interesting because we interviewed somebody uh, a week and a half ago or so that is a a dual entry into the Prince Albert Sports Hall Mm -hmm. of Fame. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my brain automatically goes to, well, those are the type of people that we attract in this building is winners and contributors and people with positive influence. And uh, you are a walking example of that. So thank you. Well, thank you. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Flamin' Connect. For Mitch Flamin and Regan Kuntz, I'm Trevor Grindy. Join us next time. Talk to you soon.